What's up guys, Tyler Casey here and I'm sitting down remotely with Kyle White. This is the 18th episode of Wolf Talk. Or no, it's actually the 19th episode. And if you guys are not familiar with the podcast here, I sit down and talk with other creatives, anyone who directs, edits, uh, music videos, but not limited to music videos, really anyone who creates anything. So yeah, today I'm sitting down <laughs> with Kyle. How you doing, man? Cool, man. We're sitting down, but we're not sitting down. Yeah, <laughs> we're I'm sitting a down different, con- different, different countries. Continent. Yeah. Um, yeah, so great. where are you from? So I'm from uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the moment, I'm actually, let me just show you. Um, I'm sitting at the hotel bar. Sick. Uh, <laughs> because uh, I've got a shoot here in uh, a place called Port Elizabeth, which is on the coast of South Africa. So right at the tip of Africa. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's where I'm at currently. Yeah. Nice. And um, what are you shooting out there? Are you shooting a music video or? So, um, yeah, I'm shooting um, <clears throat> the second part of a music video. It was a two-day shoot for a guy called Nasty C. And mm-hmm. uh, in South Africa, I would probably say he's the most profiled artist in our country. Um, okay. In fact, he was in Los Angeles last year, and he shot with uh, French Montana. And oh, wow. uh, that that music video was directed by Matt Alonzo, who's like oh, awesome. my idol. He's my idol, so uh, yeah. it's great to have the opportunity to shoot for him. So essentially, I shot him um, on the weekend, this past weekend, okay, in uh, cool. Cape Town. Got the performance scenes out of the way, and uh, and now I'm doing the narrative on Friday and yeah, Friday night, and then into Saturday morning. Cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. A lot of pressure is on me. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people are going to see the video. So yeah, when you when you're doing a, a video and you know potentially millions of people are going to watch it and your name's going to be on it, uh, best be good. So yeah, definitely. Um, uh, you so yeah, shoot, I'm super. Yeah, you got to yep. shoot your shot and just be ready to. Um, yeah. yeah, tons of pre-production went into this, or did you, I'm guessing you put a yeah, lot of work so into it. So actually, uh, for for something like this, especially when you're dealing with a record label like like Universal or Sony or whatever it may be, yeah. um, a lot of stuff goes into it. So uh, this music video has been coming since October of last year. Wow. Um, so the beginning of October, so October, November, December, and now January, mid Jan, we're shooting. So it was three months, and mm-hmm. now we're only shooting in this fourth month. Um, and you know, when you're dealing with big record labels, aside from doing a treatment, you know, you've got to make changes to that treatment, and then there's budget adjustments, and then yeah, uh, there's just a lot of people to deal with. Yeah. Um, but uh, with reason, obviously, especially with with uh, such a high profile artist, you would expect that. You know what I mean? With good management comes a lot more time taking, if I can say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's really cool, man. Yeah, that's. I think that. Even just right there, offered people a lot of value just listening, kind of hearing that Tyler, side of stuff. I, I just want to say something. I know that I know you're chatting to me, asking me questions, but yeah, no, it's I've, all good. I, I've, I, I've, you know, uh, for the last couple of months, I've been watching your stuff. I subscribe to your channel, and it's weird to me that I got a message from you on Instagram <laughs> because it, it's just weird. You know, it's like yeah, uh, yeah. there's another director of photography. His name is Logan Mize, um, and he's based out of Los Angeles, and he shoots quite a f- few things for Cole Bennett. Okay, um, I think yeah, I think I've seen him. Mm, so uh, we became friends uh, through social media as well. Yeah, and he just said to me once, he was like, "Dude, I want to come see some lions in Africa." Um, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, in when was it? August, September. Yeah, around about then, he just got on a plane, flew here, and came and spent a week with me. Wow, that's and, cool. Uh, yeah, it's so sick, dude. The, the world yeah, is so small, especially when uh, you know with all these social media things yeah i know it's crazy Uh, yeah Um, i recently came across your channel too because i think you i think you reached out to me and you said you found my channel or something and Mm -hmm. then i i might have commented you probably saw my channel from commenting on your channel or something because i I saw you remember how it happened did you collaborate with someone i'm trying to think who you collaborated with on youtube because i found your work from uh, i might have found it on what, what you was follow it? Olufemi, don't you? Yeah, that's where I found you from. Yeah, I found yeah. a lot of people from him, and he really puts on like your work is really solid. Like, um, so that's what I was going to get into. You run a YouTube channel. You're starting a YouTube channel, right? How long have I've, you been I've done? I, I've done one YouTube tutorial video. Yeah, and I've got a second one that's about to come out. But the thing is, dude, because I'm shooting so much, I'm finding it very hard to. Um, Balance to find that. Yeah, and the thing is, I, I don't. 
like my first YouTube tutorial video, it, like if you watch it, you can see there's a lot of time that's been put into it because I don't want to, I want to put a lot of effort into them. I want to make yeah. them like long videos because, you know, I, I just want, I want to have my own style or way of doing it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And if you watch that tutorial video, it's not like, uh, I'm more like a lecturer than a, like, like a personality, like I would yeah. say you are or Peter McKinnon. Is really yeah. huge, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, the, the second one that I'm doing, uh, it was quite fun because the, the first video, YouTube tutorial video that I did, um, some all the footage that you see on there of my work is shot on the red cinema camera, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm a red owner, I'm a red guy. Um, and obviously, I'm going to show red footage because, you know, it's a, it's a great camera and, you know, yeah. that's what I own. And I knew this was going to come. I didn't realize it would happen on the first day that I released the video. But someone sent me a message on Instagram and said to me, oh, but all your footage is just red footage. You know, what can you do with the DSLR? So, yeah. so, so then I took, I took that as a challenge. Uh, so That's for tight. my second episode, I shot on the Canon T2i. That's it. Um, and, I just, and, and we did like a freestyle music video. Mm -hmm. um, with like no fancy props or anything like that it just came down yeah. to shooting and editing grading and and after effects um, nice. and and it's, it's just fun you know i just need to get around to to polish yeah yeah, yeah yeah no i've been having i i've been trying to focus more on youtube as well um because i do like doing music videos and whatnot but i really have found that i like doing the youtube stuff as well um, and then I found this podcast being really helpful too, because I just like being able to talk with other creatives, talk about their process and also just make connections as well. It's been really helpful mm. for that. So it's and just cool. to, just to learn how to speak. Um, sorry, sorry. I'm just pulling another chair here so I can get my foot up. So it's all good. Uh, I, I, I can, I, I can see that it would help you also in terms of speaking freely, being able to just like bounce what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a great way to practice as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, dude, I love your stuff and I uh, appreciate and you, it. You pump, you're pumping out a lot of content as well, which is great, dude. Yeah, I've been trying to do that. It's kind of hard juggling it with other music videos and budgets like that. And I've been, yeah. I, I've most recently just started getting budgets for music videos, like bigger budgets, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing mm -hmm. too crazy, but you know, five, ten thousand dollars. It's slowly been growing, mm -hmm. so it's been pretty yeah. cool. And then like bringing people along with those journeys and bringing kids on to shoot behind the scenes and upload that to my channel, you know? So it's been cool. Mm -hmm. Great for networking, bro. Yeah. Very, very great. It's just uh, surreal being, speaking to you, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, that's one thing I was going to recommend too, is people to check out your uh, channel and especially your new video, just because the quality of your content is really solid. And I think oh, thank um, you. it's hard finding channels where people – actually give away solid tips and give mm -hmm. solid mm -hmm. information away, you know? So yeah. I think yeah. once we find channels like that, we definitely need to, um, I don't know, put people on and let them know about that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah. And it's so, like a dude, I, I, I really, you know what, I, you know, I've learned, you see, I'm self-taught. Uh, okay. I, I didn't go to film school and stuff. And what I, what, I, what I know, most of it of what I know actually comes from places like YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I feel like there's a lack of one thing I've, I found a little gap in where I really want to hit it, maybe perhaps with a third YouTube or fourth or whatever, um, is DaVinci Resolve color grading. Yeah. Um, because that, that's one thing I take very seriously and I put a lot of effort in, um, but it's really lacking content. Um, mm -hmm. on YouTube specifically free content for people to watch. Yeah, no, um, there's, the, I feel like. The people who have that skill knew that it was lacking, so they made paid content because they know they could get paid from it. Um, because yeah. the, which which but isn't they, good, but yeah, when there's but if you if Tana, you're doing this stuff because you want to gain a yeah, and you yeah, want yeah. to improve yourself and your business. So, dude, I'm no, that's what that no, free that's what stuff. <laughs> exactly. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying people did that because they saw there wasn't any content, so they knew they could capitalize on that. But if they were to exactly. do it free, they would have had a following and they could have sold LUT packs in the, you know, anything like that in the future, mm. which... Um, that, that's the game plan, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was checking out your uh, your website just now. The color grading section is really nice, the way you overlay. You. So, so you do put majority of your work in Dissolve? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, cool. um, 
Yeah, so obviously I started out just doing everything in Premiere, and then uh-huh. it was like it, you know everything's great progression with what we did, what what we, what we do. Like I started out on Final Cut Pro mm-hmm. uh, uh, seven or whatever it was before they stopped updating it, and um, Final Cut Pro. And then I was like, I need to make the jump to Premiere Pro if I want to be a red user because red footage is red natively within Premiere Pro, which means I don't yeah. need to export proxies for Final Cut or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I made the jump to Premiere Pro, um, you know, uh, which, you know, all EDLs are similar, but they're different, you know what I mean? So yeah. that was a little learning curve. And then, you know, I was producing some decent work. I was getting better and I was like, but I'm going too slow. I need to take a bigger, bigger jump. And I think the, 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 the biggest jump that I had was when I took my color grading seriously. And mm-hmm. when I actually dove in, looked at DaVinci Resolve and was like, what is going on here? And just spent days and nights grafting and working things out and figuring out my own sort of style and look. And now, yeah. I, I, and now I, I tried to grade something in Premiere um, at the end of last. I can't remember what I was doing. Yeah. I was like, let me just see what's, you know, just for fun. And yeah, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing anymore. I was like, I don't yeah. have the tools that I need to make this picture really pop. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, got, you would. People, people need to get on it, bro. Yeah, I know. That's one thing I've been. Out, I've been slacking on is DaVinci Resolve. Maybe on this next project, I need to color it. I have red footage. So, what's the workflow really like um, going from Premiere? So, you edit in Premiere still, correct? Yes. Yeah. So. Like, this is the one thing you've got to work out for yourself. So, when I was just editing and grading within Premiere, I would edit. And while I was editing, I would do my effects while I was editing because I would see a certain shot that I love and then I'd go, okay, cool, but this would look cool with a jump cut, let's say, or an overlay. Yeah. And I would do it immediately. And then everything was just in Premiere. But when you are working with DaVinci, you have to edit your stuff in Premiere and not do the effects. You just have to see the effects and know what you want to do with them. Mm-hmm. Because what you have to do is then export your timeline as an mm-hmm. XML, put it into DaVinci Resolve, do your color grade, export another XML, put it back into Premiere Pro, yeah. and, then, and then you do your effects, which is, which is a hurdle at first. But the yeah. thing is, like anything, you figure it out. And then now I like doing that. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I like yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, I and I think that makes more sense with the effects anyways because I've always wondered that type of process on which way that would work because I'm working with a VFX guy right now, so I'm kind of mm-hmm. um, trying to figure out that whether we color grade first or... You see, the thing um, is when you, when you color grade and you export an XML and put it into Premiere Pro, wh- when it's back in Premiere Pro, you cannot extend any clips. You can't do you, do you understand XMLs are locked in. Yeah. They're yeah, locked yeah. in edits or locked yeah. in grades. So Yeah. That's tricky. So, yeah. It's I don't tricky, know. but it's worth it, Ty. I promise <laughs> you, brother. I'm gonna have to try it out on a like a more simple video with not effects. Just to see it, like <laughs> what it's like. Because this last one I did all sorts of nest and layers and Mm-hmm. All sorts of. I use Sapphire a lot on this one, so okay. Um, it's pretty cool. We just shot it on the Red Raven, and we did a quick okay. little pickup shoot last night. But yeah, Red Raven's a super decent camera, dude. Yeah, it's, it's pretty what? solid with, especially with lighting and when you light correctly and yeah. Yeah, dude, it's like any camera. It's just, but for me, just having that. It's like when I, you know, I was telling you I did that the second little tutorial video that's not out yet where I shot on the Canon T2i. It's my first ever camera. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It was more difficult to shoot on a DSLR than it is to shoot on RAID. Yeah, most and, definitely. And the, the, yeah. Absolutely, bro. The, having raw capability within your footage, whether you own it or you just, mm-hmm. you're just you renting the camera, it's yeah. worth it, dude. It is so worth it. The detail that you can pull um, mm-hmm. out of your uh, vigils is incredible, bro. Yeah, it's insane. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Even what? Do, how do you feel about the uh, Blackmagic uh, Pro CC 4K? The the new mm, one, twelve hundred. The, the new Pocket Cinema. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, the new Pocket Cinema. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I haven't tested it, but yeah, I just don't like the ergonomics of the camera. No, yeah, the ergonomics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're horrible. I mean, for the yeah, price yeah, and the yeah. specs are cool though. Having yeah. raw twelve hundred dollars. 
let me tell you something. My favorite DSLR camera was my my last one that that I've used is, is what I'm saying here is was the Panasonic GH4, and I'm I'm pretty yeah. sure that if I wasn't on RAID, I'd be on the GH5. Yeah, I, I, I have the, the GH5, GH5 right now. That's what I I have the GH5 and the GH5s. Oh, They're you got two cameras. You balling, huh? <laughs> yeah, <I'm> balling. <laughs> well, you know, with a podcast and every, and one has IBIS, so I do like. I used to use the Sigma eighteen to thirty five with the GH five mm-hmm. with the IBIS, and that was like yes. my go to, just because like I could yeah. shoot handheld, but it looked natural because the lens didn't have IBIS, and then also mm-hmm. when you pair the like a twelve to thirty five or anything with IBIS with the IBIS in the body. Like it's insane. Must be incredible. Like, it looks like yeah. a tripod shot, but the GH five S, the colors are way better. Like and it's, it's better like than low light, but then you don't have the IBIS. I'm you don't have the so. IBIS, correct? Yeah. So when I did the eighteen to thirty five, you just get micro jitters, and it's just like I don't know. It kind of takes why the point they, of why do they do that though? Because I think they had to make the – it's also wider too. So like when you film in 4K, like the crop is actually pretty significant from the GH5 to the GH5S. So they use more of the sensor and then it's kind of like what they did with the A7S and the A7R. Um, I don't remember if they lower the megapixels or – I think they lower the megapixels so they're – um, it's better in low light. So I don't know. No. Do do you know what – like – I could design the perfect camera. But they'll <laughs> yeah. never do that here. Huh? Yeah. Ever. Like, I've always I want, thought that. I want, I want the 1DX Mark II's autofocus or the A7R's mm-hmm. autofocus. Yeah. I want, I'm talking about the smaller like DSLRs. If there was a camera like this, I want 120 frames in 4K. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I want draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. a small form factor with yeah, a handle exactly. on top. A handle Sweet. on top would be sick. Yeah. yeah, and then give me image stabilization as yeah. well. Yeah, it'd be cool if you too. could turn it on and off, though. So, like, when you do, you get the global shutter. Because that's one yes, thing I don't like yeah. about the GH5 is that's why I switched the S as well. Because when I do, like, whip pans or, like, fast tripod movements, Everything's you, get, you yeah. get some – it's not as bad, but you get some weird, like, it tries to counter you a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It tries to track you is what you're saying, eh? Yeah, it, it kind of – yeah, yeah, it kind of – it's like a – it's not as bad as Sony, but yeah. it's it's not good. But um, yeah. So what what um, so how long have you been doing music videos for? Because I kind of saw you did commercial stuff in the beginning. What was that journey like? Okay. So 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 um. Okay. Where do I start? Um. All right. So I I grew up. I'll give you a little bit of a life story. A little bit. Um. Just as quick as I can. So All good. I, I was born in a very small town in South Africa. And like to give you the idea of the size, I mean, the, we don't have traffic lights in this town. It's so small. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, after school, you know, during school, I was very into drama and theater. And uh, I always wanted to be a TV presenter. Mm-hmm. So after high school, I moved up to the big city here in uh, South Africa called Johannesburg. And, and I sort of pursued that and I got a show on MTV base, which is MTV Africa and, um, and a couple of other shows that I did for a couple of years. And during that process of being a TV presenter, I got in behind the scenes and I started off as like an assistant and I moved up and I became the production manager of the show and wrote the scripts for the show that I was presenting eventually. Then, uh, you know, a little while after that, um, I, you know, I went to go visit my brother in Scotland and he's an amazing photographer and I I ended up getting into it through him and he, you know, he's a photographer. I immediately started filming off his spare DSLR and while I visited him, uh, eight years ago in Scotland, I actually ended up buying myself a little, that Canon T2I camera. Nice. And yeah, when I came back, I was at work for a couple of months and the guy that used to print flyers and you know, he was like in this print shop, like very close to my work. Uh, we became friends over time. And just one day randomly, I asked him if he was like a rapper by any chance. And it turned out he was. And uh, I just said, can I film a music video for you? So I did a yeah. performance music video for him. It turned out sick. I was like, I love this. Uh, can I make money? Turned out you can. So, you know, from yeah. then, and then I, then I resigned from my job and I pursued, pursued, uh, you know, a career in filmmaking. From That's there. awesome. Well, cool. Yeah. Nice, man. Um, how old are you right now? 
Uh, how old do you think? Uh, I'd probably say 28, 29. You're a legend. Oh, 29. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm 32 this year. Okay, May. nice. Yeah, cool. And how old are you, bro? I'm 23, turning 24 in April. She's this, dude. Yeah, you're you're a baby, bro. And yeah. you already, you know how hard you're pushing. I mean, I can only it. imagine where you're gonna be when you're you're my age, dude. I mean, yeah. If I, if I yeah, work I've been, this out, I've been you know, mentoring. I was about your age. Yep. Okay, nice. I've been mentoring under uh, this guy as well. His name's Hatch Eighty Six Films. He, I think he's, mm-hmm. I think he's turning thirty two this year as well. But he's pretty cool. He's been in the music video game for a while. He was down in L.A. like PAing a lot, but then came back up. Mm. I'm from, I'm in the Bay Area in California, okay. San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So there's a cool music scene out here. So it's been pretty cool. And do you want to stick just doing music videos, or do you want to do commercials? Do you want to get more corporate? Do you want to do film? Um, I don't know. I don't really like the corporate scene too much. I don't know. I feel I do, but I don't. It's just like, I do like doing music videos. I do like the creative process. I do like all the lighting and I do like working with artists. Um, I don't know. Like I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I like doing. Um, Mm -hmm. so I don't know. I've been having trouble writing treatments lately. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, it's, it's something I haven't done too much, you know? So I'm trying to get better at it because I feel like I'm not at my full I'm not yeah I just have I'll trouble you, putting my uh, ideas on do you know on. how you can dabble well get to, uh, uh, treatments how are you writing your treatments what are you writing them up on like uh, how do you draft your I've treatments been- I've been kind of doing them roughly just on like a slides app and then I put it all together in Photoshop with all the photos and everything like mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I need to get um, I'm on a PC right now but I know there's the app called Pages on Mac and I've seen that one works quite a bit, but I tried to do a little bit of uh, Illustrator as well. Okay. Yeah. Now, for me, I, I, what I find really easy is Adobe Spark. Have you heard about Adobe Spark? No, I don't. I think I have a subscription to it. Please go. Uh, did, if you've got the Adobe Suite, go yeah, and launch it immediately after this and see yeah. how easy it is. Okay. Sick. And if there's images that you need to use as a visual reference for your treatment mm-hmm. and you perhaps don't have an image like on hand, you yeah. can go to the Adobe sort of free stock images yeah, and you yeah. type in whatever it may be. And then it comes up with all these images wow. and then you can yeah. really beef up your treatment. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to definitely check that out then. Sick. Sweet, I'm going to click it right now. What's it called? Spark. Adobe Spark, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, have, I already have it downloaded, too. I'm going to check it out. Sick. Already have it downloaded. Yeah. You haven't dabbled. What's <laughs> I haven't even touched it. it. Yeah, yeah. because Photoshop's Jeez. a little tricky, so I'd definitely check that out. Um, but I have a question for you. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, no, what were you going to say? You're good. I'll save it for later. What I was going to say to you is, listen, dude, I hate working in the corporate field. Like, I, I, I really don't like it. Yeah. If I'm managing the whole production, no. What I do like is working as a freelance DOP on commercials and corporates yeah. because I can go in in the morning, do my job, light it, shoot it, boom, and bounce. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? And then get Yeah, paid. exactly. You don't have to edit. You don't have to deal with clients. Also, it may be for you, you know, when, but freelance and then you can dabble and you can see what it's like. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely think that's a good option because, yeah, I don't, I hate having to deal with just like everything and having all the stress on you and having pretty much everything be on you because I do like um, DPing or whatever it is, whatever. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I'll definitely keep that in mind. I like that idea. Um, Go I think it, that's some bro. solid advice. Your um, question. What's up? My question. So one thing that I notice is your lighting super cinematic in your music videos, whether just really soft and you, your colors are super vibrant. What are some tips for beginners that you would say for just stepping up their lighting game? Because I think that's one part where a lot of people just like they'll throw a, they'll buy a LED light, throw it on a stand and uh-huh. they'll call it good. You know what I mean? So what are some yeah, tips, yeah. just even stuff around the house or just some tips that you see or mistakes people make when starting out shooting music uh, videos? Hmm, uh, I think, you know, there's different scenarios you can be in. So let's yeah. say, for example, you're going to a music video shoots at a location that you've never been at before. You haven't been able to do a recce. 
Um, so you're arriving and you've got to make it work. And let's say you're using light and it's at nighttime, so it's it's uh, contrasty or whatever it may be, and you want to use yeah. gels or moving lights, whatever, kinos, quasars, whatever. What The first thing I would say is to slow down. And I've been, I've fallen into this trap many times in my career is, is that I, I, I'm too rushed. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm I felt like I needed to prove a point that I can, you know, just like any situation, make it look bananas. Yeah. If you rush, you're not going to look at it, look at your setting or your scene properly. So what I would say is just slow down, simplify it. You mm. don't have to have a thousand lights running to make it look really good. Yeah. You can just, just pull it down, slow down block out all the noise block out the clients and their friends and just take your time with things and if something's not working change it yeah if, if, if you're doing something with the lights whatever it may be and you're looking on the camera and you look at your false color and you're just like ah something's wrong here well then something's wrong don't just yeah. shoot it for the sake of shooting it also it comes again to slowing down if you rushed you're gonna just shoot it for the sake of shooting it you know, um, I would rather admit fault and go, ah, that isn't working. Get it out. Try different things to make it work. Yeah. Because um, the worst thing is, and Tyler, I know you've been in this situation before, where you get back home to edit and mm -hmm. you run the footage through and you go, oh my God, what have I done? Yeah. Or um, this could have been way better if I had just done this. Yeah. I hate and to the win. the truth is... Yeah. Oh, my bad. I hate to when you um, – or I've done this before as well. So I did a scene. I had this idea. I was trying to film someone in a booth. It was a quick run-and-gun shoot, and I shined like a light through something, and I hated the way it looked. I filmed like a couple handheld performances, and then we switched it up. I was like, no, that's not working. Switched it up, and then that performance was like 100 times better, and I ended it up using that, you know? So just tweaking and fixing things mm -hmm. and not being mm -hmm. able to afraid to play around. Uh, definitely save yeah. me in the long run. See, personally, I just felt the pressure from my clients and whoever was, you know, on set that. Yeah. I, you, you must never think you must just film for the sake of filming to show that your lighting setup is sweet. Because if, yeah. it's, if there's something wrong, if something's niggling you, if something is irritating you, whether it's big or it's small, change it. And, uh -huh. Yeah. That's it. And, oh, and uh, another tip would be, if you can go and recce a place, go and do it. So, for example, I'm shooting on Friday, sort of like evening into Saturday morning, like I told you. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, I'm spending the entire day going to the locations that I want to shoot at. I'm nice. going there, and I'm taking pictures at different angles, and I'm working things out. And, you know, so that when I get there on Friday and on Saturday to the shooting locations, I'll know yeah. exactly how I'm going to light it. And then... I certainly won't feel rushed. So if you can Ricky, you guarantee to be able to take your time. I nice. have a lot more. Nice. Are you ha uh, are you working with a DP on that one, or are you uh, DPing? I'm it? I'm doing it everything by myself. Bro. Um, do you do you have any type of crew, or is it just you? Um, I've just got one grip. I've got one. Uh, oh like, man. Like like grip coming to help me, but it's just it's very um yeah, it's very simple what I need done. It's oh, no okay, crazy gotcha. setups. So, uh, and the, the lighting, the majority, like Saturday will be natural light, with maybe with a little bit of bounce here and there. Um, and then on Friday evening, I'm literally, I'm using, um, what are they called? Those fairy light things. Those, you know, those fairy lights that you hang on like a Christmas tree almost. Oh, what yeah, are they yeah, called? yeah. Christmas lights? You know, yeah, like Christmas yeah, lights. Yeah, yeah, we just call, like, yeah. We call them fairy lights. Nice. So I like that, that name better. Uh, I've got my <laughs> Aperture Lighting Kit here, which, okay, I, nice. which I love. I've got the 120D and the uh, Lightstorm LED panels. Um, and um, just simple stuff. It's with two characters. Yeah. It, I don't need it to be over the top. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah. So uh, that's all that's I need. Awesome. But in Cape Town, when I shot the performances, I had a jib operator. I had oh, nice. uh, two assistants for him. I had a focus puller. I had two grips and one assistant. Then I had eight people. On nice. The first day cool. Well, yeah. yeah I'm and looking forward, Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that video. Um, that sounds awesome. Thanks, bro. Generally yeah. though, bro, to be honest with you, my generally my shoots are 
four people, four to five people. You keep mm-hmm. it really small. You know what I mean? I, I feel it, it, yeah. it's better that way. And another great thing is just another good tip, I, I would say, is, is finding people you can trust and that you enjoy being around and you, enjoy, and you have fun on set with. Yeah, because exactly. as soon as you have fun and you trust people, um, that's where magic comes about, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I How definitely think. How many people do you work with, Ty? Um, I would say four to five as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, on this last, on these last few sets, I think I had like, uh, I had a, quite a lot of PAs on set. Um, mm-hmm. and I had a lot of BTS people as well, but usually mm-hmm. like main people, it's usually like four to five to six. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I usually have my DP. Oh, you swapped yeah. on me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Wrong way. <laughs> it's all good. I usually have yeah. my DP, uh, Andy Chin. Um, then I have my guy, Josh Fields. He kind of does like grip, but he'll do lighting. He's also a director. We usually help on each other's sets. Then I have, uh, yeah, 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 we bounce back and forth. And then I have another okay. um, grip. His name's Spencer. So I don't know. It's usually like four to five. And like um, mm. we kind of all just bounce around. But yeah, that was pretty much what last year was for me. It was kind of just like building out. And then we kind of built like a small little like uh, network that we all help each other on each other's shoes. And it's been pretty good. Yeah. Um, dude, so that's that was so pretty cool. Ca- yeah. So cool, dude. Um, but you know what, bro? Like I always, I count my lucky stars, man. Um, I. Honestly, I think filmmaking is right up there with one of the best jobs in the world. Um, just like the freedom and freedom of movement, being able to be creative and uh, working with music all the time and, and yeah. doing stuff that's actually fun. Editing and color grading for me and seeing things come together. Yeah. It's so much fun, bro. It's the, or it's, doing it's, an yeah. effect that really works and you go, Jesus. Yeah. I create. I did that. I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. You know what I mean. Exactly. Like, yeah. We just I'm did. Cool. Uh, <laughs> someone was asking me yesterday what were some of my favorite parts of this job, and like, what's your favorite part of the process? I have a lot of different favorite parts, so that's pretty cool. Like they're like, you like being on set, and I was like, yeah, I really do because like when an effect or like a shot gets pulled off the way I saw it in my head is like one of the best feelings because. Um, my friend, he built like one of those glass platforms that the artist can yes. stand on top of. Yes. So we did that, and I was like, the artist was like, I want confetti. So I was like, dude, that'd be so sick when the confetti like lands on it, you yeah. know? Yeah. So yeah. and I got like really thick silver confetti. So I wanted yeah. like the light to hit it. So we had like a pro mist filter on. So I kind of wanted it to like mm-hmm. gleam. Um, mm-hmm. And then so I got a, I had my little cousin with a leaf blower in the back. He's dropping confetti. And then we had like some big like Gemini's flashing on the sides, like uh, RE Sky Panel type lights. Yeah. And yeah. it came out perfect. Like, it, And then we had like a small turntable. The We had the red underneath spinning. Yeah. It was like it just came out perfect. Like when I saw the confetti fly, it was, it was awesome. Yes, so, yeah. you did. Yeah. But we, are, we are so lucky, bro. And you can actually yeah. do – you can actually do a, a podcast or a YouTube tutorial mm-hmm. video on that. You know what I mean? Because it is it, – it, I, I can't imagine that it's, it's sitting doing a podcast on being attorneys, you know. Yeah, it would be pretty being boring. Being doctors. Yeah. <laughs> what are, what's some of the craziest set stories that you have? Just Do you have any crazy stories? Uh, well – before we put in, uh, so like when we send out a um, our uh, call sheet, um, we kind of have uh, what is it terms and conditions. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I've saved myself now over the last year or so, um, but I before I put this in my terms and conditions, before I even had any terms and conditions, you know, uh, some clients, you know that they perhaps don't take their work as seriously as other people and they would drink on set. Um, so now I say, if you're drinking on set and it's not a prop, I have the right to shut down the production and I won't be held liable essentially. Is that for um, the artist or is that for, um, that's for the artist. Like it's not always just the artist, but it's, and this is only a, in some cases. It's not all my clients. Most of my clients are great to work with. But um, like the artists will often bring their friends to sets who have nothing to yeah. do with the actual shoot. Uh, and you've been through the same situation. I've, I'm uh, dealing with that current situation. Yeah, dude. You need to wipe alcohol out of the equation, dude. Because yeah. I, at the end of the day, like I, like, like I said to you a bit earlier, I love to have fun on sets. And I love to have a synergy and I love everyone to enjoy themselves. 
but as soon as you start treating it like a party, I'm there to work. I'm there yeah. to give you the best of me because you've paid for me to give me for me to give you the best of me. So if you're there to have a party and you're not going to take it as seriously, if not more seriously than me, then it's going to put me off. So yeah. yes, I've had some crazy s- stories where guys are just inebriated to the point where they'll fall asleep halfway through a performance take. Yeah. Literally, literally I've had, obviously I won't <laughs> mention names, but yeah. I was perform- doing this performance take. I had dancers um, and he fell asleep. Yeah. He fell asleep halfway through a take. I had to go and wake him up because yeah. the shoot day must continue, but you drink yeah. too much. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. So, um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, I that's, think that's yeah. definitely a problem now as well with um, this new generation of like rap and whatnot and just like the culture. There are mm. just like a lot of drinking, drugs, smoking, everything on and, set. And this so. cough, cough mixture thing is a new thing as yes. well. They call it yeah. lean or whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, that's a, that's a big thing as well because that makes you really tired. So, yeah. I think. And especially just people wanting to use that as props, and it's a real prop most of the time. It's and they're like, oh, I don't want to use fake yada yada because I don't want to portray that, or you know, I don't know if you ever have problems like that. But yeah. it's I think with especially with this new generation um, of like rap, I'm not sure if it's over there, but definitely over here, there's that generation where people want to portray. I've that. seen it creeping in, but it's not something that I will, would deal with. Yeah, it's like I, I feel like I, I've, I've positioned myself in in my country um, in such a way that, pe- like the guys who are coming to me to work with me, know the type of person that I am, and they know that I don't yeah. stand for that type of behavior. I'm like I said to you, I'm all about having a good time and enjoying yourself. But as soon as you're going to abuse anything, whether it be alcohol, wh- whatever. Then I'm yeah. not in, and then you're going to see a different side of me, and I'll, uh, you know I'll wrap things up, I'll walk, I'll go. Yeah. Because it's not worth me putting my name on something that I'm not going to be proud of. Because you're yeah. behaving like a child. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely like that, and I think a lot of people need to hear that because I don't know, it's just important to. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a lot of waste of time. Oh, you got a little quiet there. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. It's good. Sick. Okay. Um, okay but yeah, dude. Um, What's it called? I didn't have time to post questions or whatnot. I was going to see what are some of your go-to lights that you use right now just on set, like for like Apertures. running gun stuff. Apertures, Apertures yeah. Uh, Do you have the Apertures. 300? Uh, I don't. I've got oh. the 120D. And, and no, no, but I want to get the Mark II version. Uh, and yeah. then I've got Qu- Quasar tubes that are shipped in that um, are beautiful lights. I love. I really nice. enjoy working with them and putting gels on them and so on. Um, and then I, I'll often have uh, like a 4K HMI on set. Nice. Um, depending on what it is, you know. Cool. Um, I, I really enjoy my jibs, uh, my Jimmy jibs. I just get an operator in and I tell him the movement that I'm sort of looking for. I'm really enjoying that as of late. But I kind of go through trends. I kind of go through my own nice. trends yeah. that I enjoy. You know what I mean? And yeah. just keep things fresh and, you know, one thing you never want to do is get, and I, I, I've fallen into this trap before, is you don't want to get stuck with a specific, you don't want to get stuck with a specific uh, sort of, for example, do you know what I'm noticing a lot is I'm noticing some people are, you know, I, I know gimbals are, are lovely. You know, gimbals are great. They're so much fun. Yeah. Ronin S, what, Ronin M, Ronin Movi, great. But the thing is, some people, uh, upcoming filmmakers, and, and um, you know, that I see on Instagram and so on, they will get stuck in a rut of you, having the same movement over and over mm-hmm. and over again. And then I think to myself, geez, dude, but it's becoming stagnant now because yeah. also when, when they're using his iron crane or whatever it may be, often it's just a wide lens. Yeah. And then the whole video ends up being wide. What about your mid shots? What about your telephoto shots? Mm-hmm. You, you gotta add, you gotta add, um, you gotta spice it up. You gotta make it dynamic, and you're not gonna make it dynamic by having the the same movement all the time. It's very nice getting a stable shot. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I love it, but add something different. Add a bit of handheld. Add a dolly shot. Yeah, um, I even think like of different you, ways. Yeah. yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think um, just the gimbal. I think people think of it as like this is what I need to make cinematic or whatever 
videos and they just love the way it looks right out the gate. But you it's really easy, have to. Tyler. It's, it's, it's really easy. easy. Yeah, it's easy to yeah. just plop it on, balance it once, and just go for it. You know. Yeah. And it's which, it's which a, is it, fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. I think it's right for certain scenarios, but I like what you're saying as well. Is like you don't see a lot of people even putting like telephoto lenses on um, like gimbals because you get some really cool like orbiting shots, uh, you know? You should do it. Yeah. Dude, let me tell you something. If I was still shooting um, on a DSLR, um, like let's say, for example, if I came out with a, a DSLR that shoots raw and all those fancy things, image stabilization, yeah. autofocus, yeah. and then I'd be like, oh, stuff red. I'll go for, for that. Okay, let's say that yeah. I have a small form factor camera. I would shoot not on a Ronin. and I would shoot on a glide cam, bro. Yeah, those are sick. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. I love it, and it just has that sort of waviness to it. Yeah. Like, oh, I love it, brother. I yeah. love it. Yeah, that's one yeah. thing I want to start implementing in my videos is just hiring more steady cam operators around from my area, just because I think. Me I don't too. Know. I, I, yeah. I'm actually with you, Brie, because I've never hired a steady cam operator ever. Yeah. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? If I've done gimbal shots, I use my own Ronin and my um, yeah. what's it called ready rig. Okay. Uh, but but I would love to actually just bring a steady cam operator in. I'd love yeah. that. Just hand the camera over and go, I want this type of shot. I want you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I especially like it for the low length angle type stuff and then where you can kinda of get like those Dutch floating type shots. I'm yeah, with you. I, yeah. I'm think, I I see exactly what you're seeing, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I was just on set recently, um, for a pretty big video and I was just like PAing, just helping out and then just seeing this steady cam shots were like amazing and just the steady cam guy just being on standby and then like just gets to pick up the camera and kill it. It was just, pretty cool. Just remember when you get a steady cam operator, if you don't have autofocus on your camera, like if you're using your yeah, Raven, follow focus. Get a get a very good focus puller. Always yeah. make sure you do your research, dude. Like uh, if you're gonna use a focus puller, make sure that that they've got. To, look for the ask to see their portfolio. Okay. Yeah. I've been on set before where I've had a focus puller. It's only happened to me once. It'll never happen again. But the oak was just he was searching for the shots mm -hmm. you can't have that that's yeah it critical. needs <laughs> yeah that is critical definitely for um yeah because that's like you're gonna lose 50 60 percent of your shots if they're out of focus so it's exactly. important yeah it's definitely an art form in itself focus pulling absolutely focus pulling is not a joke dude you know when i was first getting into the industry and i was learning about filmmaking and i heard about focus pull i was like Psst, pull my own focus yeah, because I knew nothing about it, but yeah. that in itself is an art form. I've got a lot of respect for focus pullers, especially the focus pullers who take it seriously. And mm -hmm. some focus pullers can just look, they don't even look at the monitor. They can just look at their subject and see like feet and they can see the distance. And yeah. so, yeah, it is definitely an art form in itself. Though. That's awesome. Sick, dude. Yeah. Well, what can we be looking forward for you in the future? I'll let you wrap up because I know you got stuff to do. Um, well, yeah. Listen, I've got a three-month-old little girl, um, oh, okay. and my wife's in the hotel in the room, oh, the hotel man. room. Yeah. And she sent me a message now, and she's like, "There's a movie about to start," <laughs> so she wants me to go watch a movie. Yeah. Sick. Um, uh, so uh, yeah. So, what can you expect from me? I hope to do more YouTube tutorial videos. Yeah. Um, I just need to um, plan the time a little bit better, and yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, dude, just keep making music so, videos because that's what I love to do. I yeah. love making music videos. Yeah, well, I think people what, should definitely check you out on Instagram as well, so they can stay up to date with you. If you don't post on YouTube, I'm pretty sure you'll be active on Instagram as well, so yeah, they can stay up to Instagram's date with your content like there. Yeah, Instagram's like my little home tie. Yeah. What were you about to say? I um. I, don't, uh, uh, I was going to say, Tyler, what can I expect from you? Expect from me? Um, definitely yeah. a lot more podcasts. I'm going to try link up with other people on YouTube and just other creatives, get some more insight, uh, more tutorials. I actually just got a lighting kit in the other day from uh, Quasar. It was pretty sick. Um, they sent me, what like, did the you get? They sent me the – I don't have it. Uh, it's on my bed. It's the uh, – the battery power kit. So it came with the yes. two foot battery power, the one foot and the little like five inch one. Nice. Have you yeah. used it yet? I used it last, last night. Yeah, it was awesome. It was really cool. Just being able to like put it on a C stand, not have to run power to it. And just like, how long do those batteries last for? bro? Four hours, uh, on full brightness. 
insane. Fine. It's, it's so, so use great. It for your, <laughs> so use it for this heat and turn it off. Yeah. Then you can use it for your entire shoot, bro. Yeah, pretty much. <coughs> and, and most of the time, you're going to dim them anyways. Because like, if you don't have gels on them, they're so bright. So yeah, definitely yeah. when you dim it, like I'm sure it would last. They have magnets on the back of them if you haven't seen them. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then, yeah, for me in the future, just I'm going to post a lot more dope stuff on Instagram where um, just trying to offer more value every place I can, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube and just trying to mm -hmm. connect with more people. Yeah, yeah, help people out. Ty, Ty, thank you so much for reaching out yeah. to me. Yeah, uh, caught me by it. surprise. I really appreciate it. This is something yeah, different. We, I've never done something. Yeah, like this, this is cool. Before. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, cool, um, what was it? We definitely need to collab on something on YouTube in the future. I think that'd be pretty cool. Damn or, or straight, bro. Yeah, of course. And you're yeah, welcome to sick. come to Africa anytime. Sick. Okay. Definitely, man. Olafemi is before you, and then you can come after that. All okay? right, for sure. All right, cool, cool man. Brother. All right, man. Have Thanks, a good one. Ty. Nice talking to you. Cheers, bro. All right, peace Cheers, out. Cheers, my brother.